we just received three different types of testing boards. One of them is a USB-C testing port. The other one is a micro USB testing board. And the third one is lightning testing board. Each one of them is used for a different device. The lightning port is used for Apple products, micro USB for most Android products, and USB-C is used for all devices that has a USB-C connector. In front of me, I have two devices here. I have a Nintendo Switch that does charge, but black screen, and the other one, it does not charge at all. What I did is I plugged this testing board into the one that charges properly, and I took the readings of all those pins. Meter in diode mode, rat probe on ground, and I measured every point on that board, and I wrote down the numbers. I want to compare a good working board that charges to a non-functional board that does not charge. So let me show you the numbers that I got for a good working board that charges. On the board itself, you see numbers. A12, A11, A10, A9, A8, so on and so forth. And on back of the board, we see B12, B11, B10. So I wrote them down as A, B12. So the first reading here is for the A, and the second reading is for the B, which is back of the board. I noticed that back of the board, they all read the same, except for the last pin, B2 reads, it doesn't read ground, it reads nothing. Let me show you what I mean. What I want to do is start using this board to figure out issues with the switch. Based on the readings that we get, we may be able to tell what's wrong with this device. So this is the first time I use this board. And it's the first time I take numbers, meter and diode mode, red probe on ground, which is here or here, either one. Black probe goes here. Ground. So B12 is ground. B11 is NA. It does not read anything. B10 is NA. It does not read anything. B9 is reading 0 0.15. So that's how we took the measurements and I have the numbers down here. Now let me take this charging board, the testing board, and put it, plug it into the Nintendo Switch that does not charge. So now I have the board plugged into the Nintendo Switch motherboard that's not charging, and we're gonna compare the readings with the good working board. We're gonna see if we have a difference in the readings, and we're gonna start to develop a pattern on what could be wrong with the Nintendo Switch based on the readings that we get. So right now, let's start with the A with the A side. The A side and the B side, this side is A, A12, A11, A10, A9, and the other side is B's. All the readings are the same except for the B side, B2 is reading nothing, whereas A2 is reading ground. That's the only difference between the front and the back side. Let's measure on the A side, meter and diode mode, and then we're gonna put black probe on A12, and we should get ground. Now A11, A10, we should not get any reading. A11, A10, that's good. A9, based on what I wrote here, we should get a diode reading of 0 0.19. And look at this, we are getting short instead of 0 0.19. So A9 is shortened to ground, we have a problem. Let's continue. A8, we should get 0 0.49. And that's correct. A7, we should get 0 0.78. And that's correct. Now, A5, we should get 0 0.73. And A6, we should get 0 0.78. Zero po okay. That's correct. And that's correct. A3, we should not get a reading. And we're not. A4, we should get 0 0.78. 519 and we are getting ground instead. Look at this. So we know that we have a short to ground on two of those lines. So let's finally check A1 and A2 and both of them should read ground and they are ground. So we have a short to ground on A4 and we have a short to ground on A9. A9 and A4. Okay, so A4. A4 and A9.
here and here. Okay, so what does that mean? If we have a short on A4 and A9, we should not be getting a short. We should be getting a diode reading, but we are getting a short instead. Let me quickly take a look at the charging port on the inside. I did not look at that port yet. I just wanted to quickly test. And based on the way the port looks, we see damaged pins. This testing board was able to tell us that there's a problem without us having to look inside the port. I know it's easier to look inside the port and figure out the problem. If we see damaged pins, then we change that port. But sometimes the port is perfectly fine and the uh, device is not charging. So by building a pattern using this board, in the future we will be able to quickly tell what's wrong with that board based on the readings. Right now, for example, A09 is reading 0 0.519. In the future, if A9 was reading 0 0.4 instead of 0 0.519, and we discovered that M92 is the problem, then we will know every time we get a 0 0.4 reading, then we have a problem with the M92 chip. Or every time we get a 0 0.35 reading, then we have a problem with the BQ chip. That's what we're going to start doing. We're going to start to write down numbers and try to figure out what the issue is with the board based on those numbers. So that's the first step. I wrote down the good healthy numbers and I compared it to a non-working board. And it turns out that we have a short on two of the pins. Right now, we looked at the charging port and we do see physical damage on that port. So we're going to go ahead and change that charging port and test again. We're going to apply heat from bottom of the board and we're going to push that connector down. We're going to wait until solder liquefies and not push too early. Just like that, it fell by itself. We're just mixing unleaded with leaded solder. It's a lot easier to wake leaded or a mixture of leaded and unleaded. Look at that. Try to wake unleaded solder only and you're going to have a very hard time removing solder off the holes. But when we mix it with leaded solder, it becomes a lot easier to desolder the holes. Look at this. We're going to flip the board clean the front legs or the front pads now we're going to solder a new charging port and let's make sure this is the new one and not the old one because I have two ports in front of me here. This is the new one and this one is the old one, okay? Just making sure. Now before we solder this port, we're gonna tin the pads. We're gonna apply solder on all those pads because the pads will be hidden under the connector and there's no way to get to those pads and apply solder. So we pre-apply solder and then we reflow the connector down in place. Okay, and let's take a look and see, make sure all those pads, they have enough solder on them. Maybe add some flux and just go over them one more time. We wanna soak the pads with solder so we can do a better than factory job. Okay, so now we're gonna reflow that connector down in place.
Okay, let's check and make sure. Depends on making a solid connection. Solid, solid, solid. And all the pins are super solid. We don't joke around here. We do it right the first time. What I can do for extra security, we can apply solder on those front pins, even though we do not have to. But why not? Okay, we did not have to do this, but just for extra security. We want this port to last a very long time, and we do not want it to break off the very next day. Awesome. Now we're gonna flip the board and solder the back, and we should be all good. We're gonna test again using the USB-C testing board and uh, we'll make sure the numbers are all good. And the soldering is perfect, very nice. Okay, and this is what I call a better than factory job. Just want to clean the front with dry wipes and alcohol. Remove all residue of flux. And perfect. Okay. Now we're going to test using the USB-C testing board. And let's see what numbers we get fume extractor off so let's go ahead and test now one thing we have to note the other nintendo switch board that i tested the usb-c testing board on it has a problem with black screen so our readings may not be very accurate because we're not testing a fully functional board we are testing a board that has a black screen so now that we fix the charging port on this one the reading on this board could be what's accurate i'm going to modify the numbers based on what i read here just one thing to note, this is the first time I use the board and to get the correct numbers we should be testing on a fully functional Nintendo Switch and not on one that has a black screen or no display. So ground is good, A11 no reading, A10 no reading, A9, the number I have written here is 0 0.519 and the number I'm getting is 0 0.46. So we're going to update the number to 0 0.46. That should be the right number, assuming this Nintendo Switch is fully functional. But the other one, I know for a fact, it has a problem with black screen. And we're going to troubleshoot and see what's going on with the other one. So we updated the number to 0 0.46. 0 0.465. Let me just add the 5 to be accurate up to three digits. So now we're going to test A8 and we should be reading 0 0.494, 0 0.485. I'm going to update that number because I believe this is the fully functional one. Zero point four eight five. Then we're going to test A7 and A7. 0 0.774, I have 0 0.781, so let me update it to 774. Those numbers should be more accurate when we test a fully functional console. I'm assuming that this one is fully functional, but I'm going to have to go over the numbers again. 
A5. 0 0.736. I have 0 0.739, which is good. And then, oh, that was A5. Okay. And A6, 0 0.775. And we're going to do A3. No reading. That's good. A4, 0 0.465. instead of 0 0.519, like I had before. And then we have ground, and we have ground. Okay, so I'm going to give the board to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And if the board tested good, everything is good, then we're going to go by the numbers that I have written here. I'll share the numbers with you. So this USB-C board, along with the micro USB board, along with the lightning board, will be posted on our website today, so you can buy it. Uh, if you do not find it today, it should be posted by tomorrow. I do not know if there's anything else wrong with the board, but we'll see. I'll be back. Okay, so Big Boss reassembled the switch and everything is working. Let's go ahead and plug the charging cable just so that you can see that the console is charging. And if we look at the meter here, the console is currently charging at 1 amp, 15 volts and 1.05 amps. Awesome. Great. So we know that the charging port is fixed, and this is a fully functional console. So the numbers I wrote down or modified is based on a good console. Previously, I measured the good charging circuit of this board, and I told you that this board has a black screen. The reading on uh, two of the pads, when we tested, the reading on two of the pads were reading 0 0.519 instead of 0 0.475, like this console here. So let's say I replace the M92 chip, I'm going to start with the M92 chip. Let's say I replace that chip and that fixes the problem. The next time we plug this board in and we get a reading of 0.519, I will immediately know that the problem is related to the M92 chip. So I want to be able to uh, create a pattern of numbers where we can immediately tell what's going on with the board based on the readings. So I want to be able to plug this testing board, whether it's USB-C or micro or lightning, into any device and just write down the numbers of a good working device. So the next time we get that device, we can compare the numbers and we can start to build a pattern and that will make the repair process a lot easier. It's a very good start and I'm thinking maybe we should have a database of uh, good readings for every device that we work on so people can just log in and read the numbers, compare the numbers, and maybe we can have numbers of possible faults of what that number should read, if it's related to that chip, what that number should read, if it's related to that problem, so on and so forth. It could be a big thing. That's it. I'm going to end it right here. I'm going to work on this board next, and I'm going to see by changing the M92 chip, are we going to get this board to work? If yes, then we're going to reference the 0 0.519 reading with a bad M92 chip. I'm not going to do this board in this video, so we do not make the video long, probably in the next video. That's it. We're going to end it right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.